this is Kirsten from JK Fiber Arts. Uh, today we are going to be uh, doing the fractal spin. Uh, by an uh, overwhelming amount, uh, the uh, uh, video question yesterday uh, about what you guys wanted to see me do next was fractal. Uh, and uh, how can I uh, deny uh, I love a good fractal spin? Uh, so let's do this. Um, before we start, I have to show you my awesome new mug. Look at this thing. I love it. It is instantly my new favorite mug. It has all these cute sheep on it, even inside the uh, the um, drinking area there. So sadly, Nadine has returned to her family and our babysitting time is over, but they got me this beautiful mug along with a whole bunch of little goodies from their trip to Maine. Um, but this is by far and away my instant most favorite mug ever. So uh, let's get drink some tea and we'll get started. Mm. Awesome. So we have uh, the Jakira Farms. This is the uh, Rambouillet uh, and I have eight ounces. So uh, Judy and Erlene here are sitting on the other eight, uh, the other four ounces of this. So what I'm going to do is just for a moment, set these guys aside and we're going to focus on just doing one of these uh, braids and I will explain to you all about it. So what a fractal spin is, you're taking these color repeats and you're going to break them up. Sorry, I had to move my mug out of the way because uh, I don't want to risk breaking it the first day I have it. <laughs> uh, so what we're going to do is um, I will open this up and then um, we can talk a little bit more about the uh, fractal uh, spin here. The, uh, the way that you divide for a fractal, you, there are many, many ways. You can do it as many ways as you have the ability to split this thinner and thinner and thinner. Essentially, what we're doing is you can see that this has color repeats in, in the braid. And I'm gonna lay this out just so we can see it. Uh, the color repeats in this are such that uh, if you just spin this, um, you know, ripped it in half and then just blended it from side to side, you may have something called color pooling when you go to use it to knit. So when you knit, um, if you have a hand spun yarn, uh, there is a chance that you'll have a section, depending on how it's spun, that will be like all red or all like a big section of all gray, but all the other colors will be moving around. Uh, so you want to try to avoid that unless you're specifically wanting that in your design, which uh, there are instances where that works really well. Um, but uh, the main thing, the, the main reason to do a fractal spin is to um, avoid color pooling when you knit or weave with this. We are ready to divide for our three-ply fractal spin. Uh, the um, First thing is remember you're doing a three ply and we're going to divide the braid into three equal sections. The, uh, the way this is gonna work is you're gonna take these color repeats and the first of the thirds, you're going to leave as is just separated off. The second of the thirds you can divide and you can divide it into as many or as uh, few uh, pieces as you want depending on how much you want to uh, have these colors together. Uh, I find that doing a three ply I like to do the first strip just straight up the second uh, of the uh, thirds the second third I like to divide into three and then the third third I'll divide into nine. You can kind of see the lines from uh, the manufacturer and I am just going and dividing this into thirds. So here I have my third. So I'm feeling these and this ends, these feel about the same thickness. I'm a little thin in the center right here, but that's okay because I'm a little thick down here. So uh, I think that this in general is gonna be giving me the thirds that I want. The uh, second most important thing after uh, starting your divide here is you have to remember what order they're in. And I know we just briefly talked about that. Um, so I always wind it up the same way at the end. So I'm going to start to divide this into thirds. And I'm just gonna wind like this. And I'm gonna keep separating this as we go. So we now have 38, 38, and this is probably 39, 39. So, well, 38, 39. So I'm very happy with that. So I'm gonna put this 
into my basket. So I know that this is the one I'm gonna use for my first spin, the first, the long repeats, and I have the tail, and it's going in the top. Perfect. So that first third is off my table, and we can mentally dismiss it for now, just remembering which one is gonna be the one you're doing straight. This second one, we can also just temporarily set off to the side, and I'm just gonna set that in my bowl down here. So for the second third, uh, I'm gonna divide this into three. Uh, keeping in mind uh, that we're going to remember which end we started with here. Hopefully my lighting is okay. Uh, there is a very large storm rolling in. Um, they actually sent employees home early because there's supposed to be high winds and tornadoes and hail and um, all kinds of damaging things. So. I'm sitting here and I just saw it got very, very dark out. Okay, so I just measured these, or weighed them, I mean, and I have uh, gram-wise, they're all within a gram of each other. This is the second part done, so we have three nests. Now, the third third, I'm going to divide into ninths. And of course, while I've been talking to you, it got dark as night at 4.30ish in the evening, and i got to turn it around for you because you can appreciate my weather here. Look at that. It is crazy out there. These are blowing sideways. <laughs> Almost blowing over down there. Mike is earning its keep today and you can hear me. It is really coming down out there now. And the uh, power went out two seconds after I showed you that outside uh, uh, weather. Um, but it's back on now, so I'm gonna keep going because this is the time that I have available. I start by dividing what I have left here into thirds and then each of those thirds into thirds and that gives me my nine. Here I have all of the nests set up. Um, I think this makes a really lovely chart uh, for your brain uh, because talking about all the thirds and sixths and ninths and it's just blah. Uh, so this is the original top. I have another one of these. I'm gonna divide just like this and add it and just keep going. Um, so this is the original one, four ounces. So this is one third. These three bits are one third and these nine nests are one third. And you can see that on this first one, the color, the, this is thicker, obviously, so the color repeats are gonna be longer. And then as you progress, the uh, top becomes thinner, so this third is a little bit thinner. Make sure I keep my, my top in there. All right, uh, this becomes thinner and then this is so thin you can practically see through it. Uh, and then you have these, these nine, which equal the same amount of weight as these three, which equal the same amount of weight as that one. So the color repeats are gonna be very short on the nine. And what that will do is it will blend the colors really nicely uh, throughout your spin. So now you just spin it straight in whatever thickness you want. So I have the nine nests in there. I have the three nests in here and the one third long repeats right there. And uh, now I will just spin from each bowl, uh, making sure that I'm always spinning from the end that I tucked in in the center on top. Here we go. Uh, so it does not matter what um, you start with as far as uh, spinning your uh, bobbin, which you spin first. I'm just gonna spin the uh, straight up uh, one first here. And uh, I would like to make a worsted weight yarn. Uh, this is Rambouillet, so it is going to uh, fluff. Uh, it's gonna fold and uh, be a poofier after um, I set this. Uh, so I am thinking I'm gonna do around a 32 single. 
maybe a 33 single, somewhere in there, somewhere between the 32 and the 36 is what I'm going to do. Uh, and um, we'll uh, see how that does for us. Right after I uh, showed you that storm last night, our power went out and uh, the um, town had the worst storm ever. We actually made uh, Fox uh, news, like national news and the Weather Channel National News um, about uh, two miles from my house in an area that I was literally driving through less than 35 minutes before the storm happened, uh, had um, this really strong wind. I, I don't think that they said that it is a, a tornado or anything, but it uh, ripped all of the, it snapped all the telephone poles off at the ground and completely, I mean, there were like dozens of cars that were trapped until midnight. It was many hours they were stuck there. And uh, the, there was live uh, wires and all the telephone poles fell across our main um, road. It was crazy. Uh, we fortunately did not have any damage. Um, my uh, neighbor had a tree fall down uh, and th there are trees, power lines out everywhere, uh, and I have been um, off work today because of it, and they just canceled my clinic for tomorrow as well because um, we don't have any power at our office, and there's no air conditioning, and it's hot and humid, and um, we have, well, we have no lights, we have no nothing, you need a flashlight to even go up the stairs in the building. So uh, I will hopefully be doing lots of fibery things tomorrow. I was thinking I might be able to get outside and um, work on a fleece, that would be cool. Maybe see some Shropshire scoured, that would be cool. Um, we'll see uh, how the weather is. I'm not sure if it's supposed to rain again or not. Um, we either have drought or storm. I guess there's nothing in between this year. <laughs> so, but uh, thankfully there were no injuries. All of those telephone poles fell. There was like a car that was crushed. Not a single person was hurt. So that's amazing and I'm really happy about that. Um, so, oh my gosh, this is spinning so nice. <laughs> I want to show you the bobbin already, and there's almost nothing on the bobbin. <laughs> this is so beautiful. So, uh, typically when I am spinning for a worsted weight, I usually do spin my single around a 32-ish, uh, 31, 32, somewhere in there, because it's not a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, you know, so if, you, if you're trying to spin a... a Sorry, let me do this before I forget. If you're trying to spin a uh, worsted weight yarn with a WPI of, you know, let's say nine or 10, uh, you're not going to spin a single that is 27 or 30. It's not a one-to-one -one ratio for uh, what you want. It usually has to be a little bit thinner because there will be some blooming and you kind of have to know your fiber. So for this, uh, there's a lot of different calculations out there. One of them is you multiply by 1.25. Um, there's another one I think that says 1.5. Some of them say 1.75. Uh, so I, I uh, use an average of uh, several ones. And for this, and I also base it on my knowledge of the fiber, so I think for this one, um, I'm looking at a little bit thinner. So this is actually a 36. I'm gonna see how this looks. Let's see what we have here. Oh my gosh, that is so pretty. <laughs> I love this one. Rambo is one of my absolute faves. Uh, I think that this is gonna give me the yarn that I want. Um, you can see that's a nice uh, angle apply too, I think. Let's check that out while we're here. Having coordination issues. <laughs> I, it's actually probably eyeball issues. I just got, I had my eye, my uh, every two year eye exam. Apparently it's supposed to be every year and I just learned that today. Um, I thought it was every two years. No wonder everything was a little fuzzy. So this is about a 20, I like it. So I'm gonna try to maintain this same level of twist. Um, I might wanna go a smidge thinner. So my eye exam, they dilated my eyes, so I'm like all blurry and stuff. 
the uh, really exciting part was uh, the uh, eye doctor said that they could, she could, um, she wanted to, she suggested uh, that she allow me to have her like something, do something in my progressive lenses where you get uh, really, really good focus on um, seeing things that are within arm's length. And it, she said she could make it like four times better. And I was like, oh my gosh, you mean I can see black yarn? Uh, <laughs> so I'm very excited to get these glasses and see if I like it. <laughs> I'll have to let you know. And then if I really like it, I'll have to find out what exactly she did because um, my uh, near vision, my I never wore glasses in my life. And now my old eyes are, um, and I'm not even that old. But my old eyes, uh, they do not like, uh, you know, dim light or really any, um, uh, anything being close to my face. I just, I can't even see it. So this is 32. This is probably a 36. So let's see if we like this one. This might have a little more twist in it than I want. But I love it. Nice, consistent. The angle apply is lovely. That is going to be a beautiful yarn. Really beautiful. Oh, it also has, uh, you know, Rambouillet is known for uh, lots of sproing in it. Look at how much sproing is in there. It's wonderful. All right, let's keep going. Thing, I'm just going to spin these all the same. The most important thing, once you have your fractal divided uh, and you get it to your wheel, is spinning the bits that you, you know, the little nests that you make in the correct order. You wanna spin them all end to end and starting at the same end every time. And we'll check in with you here when I have enough on this bobbin that you can really appreciate the uh, long color repeats. Oh man, that's really pretty. All right. I know, that's all I keep saying. So let's just turn this off and I will see you guys soon. I, but I wanted to show you something about the uh, the nature of Rambouillet. So Rambouillet is um, very springy, fluffy. Uh, it has a lot of loft to it, uh, which is the official word for springy. But I like springy, uh, and uh, it um, will uh, expand quite a bit. Um, I want to show you the difference. So when 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 you're learning how to spin. Uh, Usually you go one of two ways when you first start and you're learning about yarn. You either over ply or over twist everything and you've got pigtails and coils coming out the wazoo um, or you under ply. So people will tend to, when they're early on making yarn, end up with yarn that's either like rope or that's falling apart. And depending on what you want to make, you want to kind of be somewhere in the middle of the road. I tend to make firmer yarn for socks and then I, I want softer yarn when I'm knitting uh, garments that um, are gonna be next to skin or something drapey with silk in it, you know, whatever. Uh, you know, I, I spin the yarn to match what I wanna make. Now, with this yarn, I don't actually have anything in particular in mind. The single that we have decided to go with here is a 36. Uh, and I just wanna show you here, so this is a 36 right now, and it's measuring a 36 the whole way. And I uh, stopped short on my um, twist here. So it's a 36 right now. It is not very compressed. Uh, and I'm going to do my plyback test. And you can see that this is a 36 WPI that you just saw me spin, you just saw me measure it. This is also a 36 WPI. And you think, how could that be? Um, but this one, I put a lot more twist in. And this one is a firmer yarn, this one is a softer yarn. Quite honestly, uh, I made this as my sampler and then I was like, well, am I gonna make socks out of this? If I was gonna make socks out of this, yeah, this is awesome. You're gonna have next to skin, uh, you know, something soft and with Rambouillet, I actually prefer this one. It's a nice soft yarn, um, you can see it, well, I don't know if you can appreciate it, but it is, it looks thicker because it has more sproying. This is what Rambouillet does. Uh, you know, it will poof. Um, so if I want the uh, softer um, twist, I can actually spin it thinner than a 36 with less twist, and I would end up with a worsted yarn. Uh, it also depends on my ply too. If I want to ply it tight, 
Uh, so this one right now has an angle of ply if about 20, a little more than 15, not quite 30, so this is about 20. And my initial one that I did, this one here, my tester that I saved, I think this one was around 30, if I remember correctly. 30, right on. So, and that makes sense because my I spin for socks a lot and that's kind of my default spin. But I think what I'd like to do is just keep this softer. Uh, so I'm gonna go with a little less twist. Making good progress because that storm uh, that we had really did a number on our town. And uh, I, this is my second day out of work uh, with no power at our office. Um, it should be restored this afternoon and my plan is to be back at work tomorrow. So I will not have as much time to do this. <laughs> but this was a, a, a fun little uh, break. Uh, although I feel bad for all the businesses that have been closed. Here is the bobbin check-in and uh, you can see these are beautiful long color repeats. I am ready to do my uh, thirds now. So this is the second single and the second third that is divided into three. Um, and you can see I have much shorter repeats because my braid is thinner. Uh, so let's get started and remember always start from the same end. I um, made a new sample uh, after I, I showed you the um, sporiness of the Rambouillet. Uh, I decided that I wanted it to be a little bit looser. Let's see how we're doing already out of the box here. And that is pretty good. Sticking right in the slot. So 36. I like it. And let's see our twist. That's pretty. And then I made this sample one at 36 with less twist. And ta-da! And this is the one that I uh, made the sample um, when I uh, was uh, talking to you guys about it. The um, how floofy I wanted it. And then here is the first one that I made. And you can see how much tighter this is. This is kind of stiff, if you see. And... Uh, this one is nice and soft and uh, fluffy and airy, so I like this better. And there you have it, perfectly matching. So 36 with a little less twist. All I did was increase my draw a little bit, and there you have it. As you see, I'm already into the second color. I started with yellow, I'm already into pink. And the uh, ones that are divided into ninths are gonna be even faster. And it's more, you know, these are more kind of pre-drafted almost. You see how easy it is for me to just pull this back and go because I don't have to work side to side at all on the thicker part of the braid. Here is the bobbin check-in for the thirds portion of the fractal spin. This one has the longer repeats, which was spun straight. This is the uh, divided into three. And now I'm going to do the nines. Up next, we have the final third, and this is the one that's divided into ninths, so these are wispy, wispy thin. So I am uh, holding steady with a 36 uh, WPI for this. And again, doing this the way I always do it. I have this tucked over and into the top, so even when I pick it up and I'm chatting and I forget what I'm doing, I can still figure it out. <laughs> All right. With the uh, much thinner uh, strips here, it's almost uh, completely pre-drafted. <laughs> There's not much uh, thickness here to work with, which is nice. Makes it very quick. Let's just do a very quick introductory here. I've increased my uh, draw and I'm fighting it just a little bit. Oh, well actually that looks quite good. This is the sample from the other, uh, the first bobbin, and we used it through the second bobbin, so we're pretty close here. I think we're looking pretty good. I'm going to just keep spinning these uh, little nests here. The, the, the big take home message when you get to the smaller ones is, ooh, that's very, very thin. Let's fix that. Um, the uh, take home on these uh, smaller uh, nests is there's not a lot of drafting required. You can see how thin I already am here with these.
and it goes really fast this way. And adjust your um, tension accordingly. If you want more twist, uh, I would loosen your tension. My tension is a little higher than I typically would use it from Merino. There we go. That looks good. Because this is not requiring as much twist as Merino does. Here are my three singles. Clearly, I must have uh, gotten a little heavy on the middle one here, but uh, this is the uh, first one I did with the longer repeats. Uh, I don't think you can appreciate it as much here, but this is the second one that had the thirds. And then this one, I do think you can appreciate it if you look at it closely, you can see how the colors change so rapidly here. There's not a lot of big sections. A lot of it's just overlapping. Uh, but uh, this is the one with the ninths. Maybe you can appreciate it from further back. We have Judy and Arlene looking on excitedly, and we're gonna do this on my EEW6 e-spinner. So we are ready for our three ply here. I have my uh, ply set to S. I have my speed on, oh, let's see. It goes one through five on here, and I've got it at about two and a half. We'll see what that does for us. There we go, all right. All right. And we are gonna be checking this here. Remember, this is, Rambouillet is gonna have a lot of sproying to it, so nope, not enough twist in this. Let's see what we have here. So I like this a lot. It's a very nice, soft, curve back on itself. <laughs> this is so soft and fluffy. I love it. Uh, this is probably going to be thicker than a worsted weight. Uh, we're like at a nine right now. It's probably going to plump up quite a, a bit. Uh, although it's a little bit thinner down here. Let's see what our angle is. So this gray is right in the center of this little uh, half circle here. And I'm gonna put that thicker gray one right in there so I can see it. And it's right between the 15 and the 30. And I think that is perfect. I like it. And this is uh, going pretty quick and easy. I like it a lot. My biggest concern is uh, making sure I don't over apply this because it does go so fast. I can definitely see the attraction to the e-spinner for people. Um, I tend to still like my good old-fashioned treadle the best, but this really is a, a fast way to spin. I just have to remember to move my hooks. That's the downside to going so fast. I, they make an auto level winder for this. I just didn't want to buy it because it costs the same amount that I paid for the actual wheel. Um, so I figured, uh, maybe another time. So my three ply, I'm doing the uh, standard way that we always talk about it, which is I have the um, singles through my uh, index th and thumb, index and long and long and ring fingers. And I hold um, you know, the tension with my back hand just enough. You know, I'm just sliding through. And my front hand isn't really doing anything. It, it's just like controlling the twist a little bit as it goes on. And that's not really doing much. I could see I could do it without it as long as my back hand has the tension, but I do like my front hand. I feel like it gives me that little extra bit of control and smoothing as I go. When you see this, I will be my first full day in Ireland. I'm very excited. And my first full day in Ireland, I will be uh, stopping at, at the Irish crafters of uh, Galway. Uh, it's um, in Ardrahan in County Galway, and I'm very excited because I was doing research and I sent an email to them because they were on, very close by to where we're staying the first night, and uh, I sent some other emails out to other places, but Sandra from the uh, Irish Crafters uh, sent me an email back. And so she's going to be there, and we're going to get together and talk about all things fiber. And I'm really, really excited. I lost at Bob and Chicken. <laughs> I had to take it off. I could have maybe fit a teeny bit more on here, but it is pretty darn full. Look how cool it looks, though. Uh, so the rest of it is right there. 
The way that I like to um, set the twist in my yarn is I like to wet set unless I'm doing some sort of fancy art yarn, in which case I'll steam it. I'm going to uh, just do tepid water here. And I like to use um, a little bit of wool wash. Uh, I'm not particular. I think I got this at Cheap and Wool, but this is the Euclid. Doesn't matter. I look, I use Kookaburra. Um, I used, what was the other one I used? I, I tried one. I didn't like it only because it was a weird scent that I didn't care for. Um, but mostly, all wool wash to me, I don't, I don't really have a preference. And I just put in um, just a tiny bit, like a little whoop, like that. And that is all. Now we are perfectly tepid. And I just add my yarn. So here's my big one. And all I do is just push it down in. I don't stir it up or shake it or anything. All I'm doing is just submerging it. And I just let this soak for half hour. Uh, and there's no rinsing or anything required. And then I will um, talk to you about to thwack or not to thwack. So what I want to show you is uh, right out of the towel, I've done nothing to this yarn, and you can see that it hangs perfect. There's no um, coiling, there's no twisting of the skein back on itself, and it looks quite lovely. So one thing that I do notice is that, you know, there are a couple of areas where, you know, there, there might be a little more twist in one area and a little less twist in another. In order to distribute twist, if there's an area of uh, higher twist than you would like, uh, is to uh, do uh, two things. One is called snapping, the other is called thwacking. Uh, and uh, for this yarn, it is uh, quite nicely balanced. Um, it doesn't need to be thwacked, uh, but I kind of like to, to do it, um, just even if I do it lightly, but I'm gonna show you how to snap on this one. So this is how you snap, you just, Put a thumb or a hand at either end and you just go like this and then you rotate it a little bit you hear that little snap in there and I just rotate it usually about a quarter and this will help distribute the twist now everything is hanging more symmetric and that's lovely, and that is all I'm gonna do for that. The other method that uh, people like is thwacking. Some people don't like it. What thwacking does is it distributes the twist throughout the yarn, and again, this is uh, very nicely balanced. There's not, uh, I haven't done anything to this yet. No snapping, no nothing. This is just uh, out of the towel. Uh, and um, thwacking will distribute the twist nicely. The other thing that thwacking does, and it really depends on what you are looking for. So if you have a finer fiber like alpaca or um, a yak or um, angora, anything like that, you don't necessarily want to thwack that. They already have sort of a nice halo. And if you thwack it, it will increase the halo effect. Uh, and uh, you know you can do that or maybe you would just lightly thwack it but for the most part yarns like that I would snap for for this this is a nice stout rambouillet that's top and I spun it mostly worsted so I think that um, this is a good one to show you how to thwack so all I do is I put my hand inside of here and have at it And you don't have to hit it really hard, but if you have a very sturdy yarn, you could hit it harder if you wanted. And what I do is I just rotate it through my hand, a little bit at a time, just sliding it around. And there's no magic. You just do it till you want to stop. And now that twist is all nicely distributed. And I think that that does look better than it did before. Even though it wasn't um, unbalanced, this has made it a lot smoother. It's hanging nicer. I like it. So I am not opposed to thwacking in the appropriate instance. Here is the final yarn. I wanted to do this outside, but it's a rainy day and I don't have any other time 
this week, so we are doing it indoors. Uh, this is the eight ounces of absolutely scrumptious Rambouillet. This was my, uh, I lost at uh, Bob and Chicken, so I have this extra little one over there. Um, but here is the uh, final skein here, and you can see how sproingy it is. There is so much, uh, let's do a single here so you can see it better. There's so much sproying to Rambouillet. I love it. It's very sproingy, great wearing, uh, soft. It is wonderful. Until next time, spin happy.